Well, it is uh, 6.30. We will call this meeting to order. Um, I would ask anybody that is not speaking, please put your microphones on mute. Uh, that will eliminate a lot of the feedback. All right. So. Um, we don't have Mr. Dunkley yet. Okay. Yeah, he'll, he'll stroll and he'll be here. Um, <laughs> So additions to the agenda, I have two. Uh, one is a, another nomination to the um, Solid Waste Committee. And another is a, uh, and Sandy, I'm gonna ask for some help in bringing this one up so that I don't do it incorrectly, but uh, just that concern that we sent out yesterday um, for the family in town and the use of that. Right, it'd be the A.J. Brooks request and you'd wanna do that executive session. Okay, so I would add that to the agenda. We will make that uh, number six, seven, that would be number eight to the agenda. And that will be an executive session. So uh, to, the, to the select board, when you're sending those types of things out, if I could be CC'd on that, so I know what's uh, going on and can act accordingly, it would be helpful. Okay. All right. Um, chair's remarks. Um, I don't have much. The only thing that I will say, and, and it's uh, troubling that we are here. However, this is where we are, but um, the recreation department, the playground, the basketball courts, the pavilion, um, as well as the playground at the elementary school, their basketball court, um, baseball fields are all closed to public use. This was a decision that the um, school, as well as the rec department, uh, the rec board, I'm sorry, had come to that decision. Um, I agreed with them as that's what the majority of the surrounding towns were doing. And I feel that that is safe. What brought this on was a large group of kids that were uh, in the pavilion, some of them on the roof of the pavilion and that needed to be addressed. Um, it's unfortunate and I will tell you that the call that I got from Seth Dio where he was uh, very almost shaken by the fact that he had to close the park to our town's children. It clearly bothered him. Um, so I don't want anybody to think that this decision came lightly or it was one that anybody really wanted to make, but it is for the safety of our residents. Um, additionally, I would like to note that um, the Holdbrook is offering deliveries. They're offering to pick things up for people. They're making uh, uh, bulk meals to go. They're really trying to help everybody out. So if people have not looked into that, I would suggest that they do. And other than that, let's just be nice to each other. We're all in this together. Having said that, uh, open public comments on agenda items only. Anybody? Guests, I don't believe we have any other than BCTV. Am I correct with that? Jeff Dunkley's here. Brana, go ahead, unmute yourself. What do you got? I'm a guest. <laughs> um, I'm sorry about that. Not, no, no problem. It's a little bit harder when I'm, I have to scroll through pictures to find you. <laughs> um, did you have any comments on the agenda items, Brana? No, unless you want me to tell you what the library trustees have done now and then I could just depart or uh, I can wait to the agenda item. It's sure, well, I don't, we don't really have you on there much. So uh, I would roll into department and committee reports and I would accept that at this point, if you would like, Bronna, does that work for you? Yeah, okay. um, the, tr I, the trustees meet tomorrow on Zoom. So we took, I took a straw poll last week and they all voted, we all voted to pay our staff and follow your example and they're very you know we're very grateful and i did get an email from one of the staff who was very surprised and grateful um, but tomorrow we have a formal motion to consider this just to make it 
um, kosher, I guess. I've also let Cindy know that we are doing that. Um, it seems a little bit like maybe overkill, but I think it really needs to happen uh, to make sure the record is uh, clean and clear. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And uh, unless anybody had any questions or comments on that, I would roll into Mark Snow and David Emery with an update on the COVID-19 situation. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. All right, uh, welcome uh, and thank you. Unfortunately, I'm not clever enough to uh, connect into the video part, so I'm on the phone part. Can you hear me okay? Gotcha. Yes. Okay, all right. I know Mark also is uh, connected by phone, uh, but let me, uh, I'll start and then uh, I'll turn it over to Mark. Um, <clears throat> so our, first of all, I really want to say thank you out to all the first responders, the fire, the sheriff, doctors, nurses, you know, and especially all the extra support people, the housekeeping, food prep, you know, supply secretaries, public works, you know, and the real heroes out there are not million dollar athletes. They are the people that are the waiters and waitresses or clerks and the stockers and all of them that come to work every day. So with that, I'm sure that you all get tons of emails, not only from me, but from everyone else that you're probably connected with. So I'm just going to uh, reiterate some of the stuff that you already know. As of today, uh, the state of Vermont has 575 positive tests. 7,129 total people have been tested. Uh, there have been 23 deaths in the state so far. And right now there's 29 critical hospitalized. Um, and uh, Wyndham County is sitting on 32. Um, so with that said, um, the next seven to 14 days are predicted to be the apex of, of this virus and significant more cases they expect to, to rise. So really the worst is, is yet to come. Um, so with that, uh, it's Vermont has done a great job. Uh, I can tell you the Vernon residents uh, have done a great job. The key to this is personal hygiene, the washing your hands, and uh, the distancing. And that is, that is the best tool that we have right now. And I'm sure you've all seen uh, a lot of the stuff where they're working on uh, virus, antiviruses. They're working on everything that uh, may or may not come about soon. However, what the concern is now is that once we reach that apex and we start coming back towards what we might consider normal, uh, there's a chance of it resurfacing because people are going to not follow directions again. So that's something that we need to make sure uh, we stay on top of. So um, as updates for the locals for all our stuff, uh, as you know, the school is closed and will be for the rest of the year. Um, the school is actually going to continue with their spring break from April 20th to the 24th. Um, meals will still be prepared uh, and delivered every day that they are following up. They're keeping up with all the meals. Sheriff's Department, uh, Deputy Whittle has reported that uh, he's had contact with a single person that moved here from New York and needed some education on the quarantine process. And that's the governor's order. And evidently it might become more of a problem throughout the state because they're now looking uh, at uh, cases that aren't resolved will go to the uh, attorney general's office. The fire department Nathan uh, says his call volume is actually is lower than normal. Um, the PPE that they have is still okay. 
Um, the state has put a ban on open fire burning, um, so therefore, I don't believe Vernon will be issuing any fire permits, um, but that is, uh, will be a day-to-day -day operation. <clears throat> the reason for that is so that firefighters don't have to uh, congregate uh, and violate the six foot order. And that you have to do that when you're putting a fire out. Uh, you reported on the recreation department that all the programs are closed and the parks are closed. Uh, Vernon Green is uh, talking with Skip, a uh, sleeper. Fortunately, that man is uh, on top of everything um, and he has been uh, diligent in keeping everybody uh, up to speed there. Uh, so far, they report no resident or staff cases. And um, he's working on the uh, inevitable eventually, if it does hit in there, um, how they're going to deal with the deaths. I'll speak more to that in a minute. Um, Town Clerk Kim Arsenal is our person for contact for volunteers. He has created a volunteer list, but is still soliciting uh, for anyone that's interested in being on that list. What we're trying to do is match uh, Vernon residents with Vernon residents uh, to help them through whatever needs that they have. We have three people that we've been assisting so far um, with some volunteers, and, and that's worked pretty well. Um, Tom uh, Greeno is, uh, again, doing the follow-up with all our health care uh, people in town and our groups that are, have people here. He'll be calling them this week again and checking to make sure that they're all set and see if there's anything additional we can do for them. Uh, so, and here's the EOCs. Uh, we purchased some additional field tech Tyvek suits, and we're looking at maybe... Uh, purchasing additional ones if they become available to keep in stock. And one of the things, you know, mentioning that um, with Vernon Green, with Skip, and trying to keep up with could happen is uh, there's a short supply, of, unfortunately, of body bags. Um, so we're probably going to uh, create a little expense and try to get above the curve there and, and put some in stock. Um, and again, those are as hard to get as, as PPE. So here's one thing I think that the select board might want to consider, uh, the, that we declare, the town declare a full state of emergency. Uh, it would include that the EMP and the staff from the EOC would be active and activated, which they are already. They, uh, mostly we do it all by electronics. However, uh, it would be the same duties for the town staff. Uh, nothing would change, but it would give us the authorization to apply for federal funding um, if it becomes necessary and available. Um, I believe that we have everything in place uh, through the years and through our LEMP uh, and everything <laughs> is, is there. Um, but I'm not sure exactly uh, what we need to do. So I'll contact the state uh, emergency management office and I'll get more information and I'll bring that back to you, Chris. Um, but if you want to discuss that so that when I get that information or wait till your next meeting, I'm okay, however you want to do that. Again, primarily, I think it will be for uh, the easy, maybe uh, federal funding. Um, that hopefully will become available if the town needs it. And I'll run it over to Mark Snow. Mark. Good evening, everybody. I hope you are well and healthy. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to give, given to us to uh, provide an update for uh, the board as well as the citizens of Vernon. I just have a few things uh, I'd like to uh, pass along that the health department has expanded its COVID-19 web pages. Uh, and they've done that so that the uh, content is delivered easier to specific groups. <clears throat> the new pages include frequently asked questions, long-term care and group living facilities, schools and childcare programs, 
coping with the stress and more. All information and resources and guidelines on the website is continuously reviewed and updated as needed. So I would uh, encourage folks to uh, visit the webpage. It's helpvermont.gov backslash COVID-19. <clears throat> couple, couple other things is, is in regards to uh, face masks. I'm sure everyone has heard uh, a lot on the news about that recently. And the state of Vermont is encouraging and saying that Vermonters should wear cloth facial mask or coverings if they need to leave their homes for essential purposes. Uh, the advice to wear these masks is based on new data about the, how COVID-19 can spread before a person has any symptoms. Because people may have COVID-19 but no symptoms, wearing a face mask may help keep people from spreading the virus. Face coverings are not a substitute for physical distancing and other prevention measures. Um, the most effective way to slow the virus spread is to continue to follow the governor's stay home, stay safe order, respect social distancing, and be vigilant in washing hands and not touching your face. <clears throat> With that being said, you can still enjoy the outdoors, but there's some precautions that you should take. Uh, what is being recommended and encouraged is to stay close to home. Find areas where you can walk or bike too, but if you must drive, please limit the distance to home from home to 10 miles and only drive with members of your household that are healthy. <clears throat> Practice social distancing outside. Again, that's that same message that we've heard since the beginning. Stay at least six feet apart from others. Keep your dog on a leash and close to you. Be cautious in choosing low-risk activities to avoid injury. Because if you are injured, then first responders are required to come provide medical attention and take care of the situation. So you're actually putting those folks in harm's way or possible harm's way. <clears throat> uh, the last thing for to enjoy the outdoors safely is to respect signs for closed areas, trails, and land. Um, the state officials have analyzed projections of the COVID-19 cases and hospitalization needs. The current models project the peak of cases between mid to late April and early May. So the worst is yet to come by the prediction. Um, the last thing that I'd like to say is that the Vermont Fish and Game uh, announced today that the Vermont trout season begins this coming Saturday and that it will uh, be open to Vermonters to enjoy uh, the outdoors uh, and hopefully catch some trout. Uh, but they want you to uh, take precautions for that. And again, uh, use the outdoor safety precautions that have been outlined. Uh, for additional information from the Vermont Fish and Game, you can visit their website as well. That's what I have to update at this point. Uh, I think Dave covered everything overall uh, very well. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Mark, I've got uh, two questions for you or Dave. Um, okay. Just, it, it seems to be a common question those cloth face masks, what is the recommended, if any, way to uh, clean those in between uses? How often should they be cleaned, et cetera, et cetera, as well as the use of gloves? We're seeing a lot more use of gloves. Everybody's wearing them, but um, you know, my opinion on gloves is you wear them so that you don't have to wash your hands and then you touch everything and you spread it everywhere. So um, could you guys touch yeah. on either of those? What I can say in regards to the use of uh, uh, the mask and uh, maintaining the mask is 
uh, I would refer you to the CDC's guidance on how to use and make cloth masks. Also, I believe there are some uh, cleaning guidelines on that website as well. Mr. Chairman, yes. Uh, hearing on VPR today, they recommend that they get microwave for two minutes, a mask in a plastic bag, uh, microwave for two minutes, and wash once a week in a regular load of wash. Okay. And that comes with a, a huge caution, Mr. Chairman. Um, we all know that microwaves have caused a ton of fires. And right. you put a plastic bag and a cloth in the microwave, and you accidentally set that for more than two minutes. Um, so people that are using that method uh, need to be extremely careful and pay attention to what they're doing with that. Uh, the washing is probably uh, your best option is have multiple masks and uh, wash them one day and wear another one and, and that so on. As far as the gloves go, uh, I absolutely agree is that uh, gloves were made to be disposable. Um, and, and, they, and going back to the mask, as you know, the mask is designed to keep you, the wearer, from uh, coughing anything or any fluids or anything coming out of your mouth. It, the cloth mask is not going to prevent you from getting uh, contaminated. It's going to prevent you from contaminating someone else. Um, so that's the other caution is that it's not an N95. It's not the mask that, uh, that you would wear in a setting where somebody has truly had the virus. Uh, so that's where uh, I am on that opinion. Chris? Yes. I have a question on the um, microwave. M many of us are putting um, metal for in, in them so that they can close it over their nostrils. If you put that in a microwave, aren't you going to have a problem? Absolutely. I wouldn't try it. <laughs> Any metal object in a microwave is going right. to cause a significant problem. So if you have that metal nose piece uh, that is sewn in there, whether, you know, the, one of the suggestions is that you use uh, um, pipe cleaners or wire ties or something like that that are in there, uh, I will guarantee you that the sparks will fly uh, <laughs> as soon as you hit that start button. Yeah, Can we I try that at the EOC? I want to try. No, I'm using the pipe cleaners, and I just wondered about that. All right. Um, and then, is there? We're seeing a lot more questions as far as um, what is considered an essential worker, and we could all debate what's essential and what isn't. So that's not my question here, but more so, um, these essential workers that are coming home and their families have been kind of doing the stay home, stay safe. Is there any recommendations for those people to, to keep their families safe? Well, let me tell you what I know for essential workers that are, are uh, coming home. Um, and I can speak for some of the first responders as well. Uh, what's happening is they are having some place that have the opportunity to change their clothes at work so that you can take the clothes off that you used at work and put on a different set of clothes to come home. Or what they're doing is they're changing as soon as they get home uh, before they go in and greet their family. Uh, and some are, as soon as they're getting home, uh, or if not before, are going to the shower. As we said, soap and water is very effective on this virus. Uh, so, you know, we, I would recommend any essential worker that is uh, coming home that's been in contact or, you know, with the public especially, uh, you haven't been able to do the six foot distance, I would recommend that you have a change of clothes uh, or you have the ability to uh, jump into the shower immediately without, before you do your hugging and kissing with your family. Perfect. Any other questions for David or Mark? Let me scroll through all the pictures here. I see no hands. Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, we always appreciate hearing from you uh, and staying on top of this, keeping us informed and always looking out for Vernon. We appreciate that. David, we will talk about um, the 
uh, declaration of the state of emergency um, at the end of this meeting, and then I will wait for some guidance from you over the next day or so. Okay. All right, perfect. I will hang in uh, to the meeting in case you have any other questions. Um, are you hanging in just for that, sir? Well, primarily, yeah. All right, um, unless anybody on the board would um, have an issue with that, could we move that discussion to uh, number one in new business just so that Mr. Emery does not have to stay on with us? Sounds good. I see no objection. Uh, we will do that after the uh, bills and warrants, which will be coming up. So gentlemen, thank you. Uh, we are going to move along to the approval of March 17th minutes. Does anybody have any changes, corrections, any of that happy stuff? Everybody is good. I would. Gene, I see you waving your hand. Where are you? Tom, can you unmute her or? Everybody's unmuted. She needs to click audio. <laughs> yeah, all participants are unmuted. Gene, it's always you we're waiting on. Well, uh, while we're waiting for Gene, I had a couple of uh, hopeful, um, from the board, hopeful uh, amendments to the meeting uh, minutes, as I didn't catch who made motions in a couple of spots. No, we're on two different ones, Tom. We are on the March 17th. Oh, 17th, not the 29th. Yep. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, but as we are waiting on... Gene, I we couldn't. Well, Sandy, there's no reason we couldn't do the 27th as well. If no, you, you can you can do them. You can take them out of order while Gene connects. Okay, Tom, go ahead. Uh, let me pull that up here. So I'm looking at it. Um, so go ahead. We will switch over to Friday, March 27th. That was the special meeting. Um, can we look at those and accept corrections, please? Thank you. Tom, what do you got? Well, um, if you look to the latter pages, uh, I think they're, most of the minutes are pretty good. I got the first set of motions, but there are motions on um, the last page um, for adjournment and um, paying uh, folks, the, the motion on paying folks uh, in reviewing it through the May 5th meeting. Um, Sa Sandy's trying to chime in here. I think she's okay. probably got that information. I made that motion on the um, on the May 5th. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's quite a few typographical things. Yeah, I'm sorry. Clarity. Um, Sandy, I, I know that you've got a lot of notes on this. Uh, tell us what page you want to start on and we'll all get on the same page here. Well, mostly it was, oh, let me get back to my notes here. Um, it started on page three. Is that Jean? No, on page three. Um, did Jean just check it? We just lost Jean? On the first one, the first sentence is, is needs clarification, Tom. Um, first sentence on page three. It was noted by the interim administrator that Brownville had softened on the no reporting to work at all. That should be a comma there. It should probably be a quote. It was beginning to bring some recreation and DPW employees back to undertake tasks that require no other person-to-person -person interaction. You know, Mr. Chairman, maybe we could could write our correct our recommendations and send them to him because I have a lot. Okay. Then, yeah, I spell checked it and grammar checked it, so um, I'm your spell check is broken, sir. Yeah, <laughs> that could be. Uh, but I'm certainly, why don't you send them to me and I'll make the corrections as necessary. And then we can 
can address it at the next meeting. Yep. Chris, would that be okay? That's fine. Yep. Um, I apologize, Tom, but you have to realize I'm correcting a lot of English papers right now and everything's jumping out at me. Yeah, I just checked it. Spelling and grammar check is complete. So, uh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'm good with that. What do you think, Chris? I, Sandy, I'm, I'm fine with that because I've got a few notes here as well. So, okay. um, so that's fine. Gene, are you on with us? It says her mic's on and her camera's off. I think she's on. Okay. Um, I'm at a bit of a loss here because she had some questions on the 17th meeting minutes. Did anybody else, Jeff, Sandy, Michael, anything on the uh, 17th meeting minutes? No. Sandy, you were all set with the 17th? Yeah, I, I typed up, so. I, I That's should. true, yeah. <laughs> Very good point. I see Jean again. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, oh, there she is. Perfect. What do you got for the 17th? I don't know anymore. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll interrupt real okay. quickly. I don't know if you heard us, Gene. We decided that we would table the 27th um, and we would email our corrections to Tom on the 27th. Okay. Okay. We will look at the 17th right now. Okay, so the 17th, the only thing I had was on page five, um, paying the town employees. I had um, recused myself. Right. I don't even, I don't know, maybe I did make the motion, but I did recuse myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other corrections to that one? If not, I would entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes from March 17th, 2020. Make a motion to accept the minutes from March 17th, 2020. I have a motion made by Mr. Root. Can I get a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunkley. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the March 17th, 2020 me uh, meeting minutes, please say bye. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, Gene, we will run into the uh, bills and warrants now, please. Okay. Okay. I move that we approve payment of the following warrant, 20T accounts payable, $14,339.51, 11S payroll, $7,842.57, 12S payroll, $8,003.13, and 13S payroll, $8,083.44. Second. Um, I just need to ask because those are published incorrectly on the meeting warning. Is anybody else seeing that? Oh yeah, the last, the 13 S is, I've uh, got a typo. It should be $83. So $8,083.44. Yes. Um, so we have a motion. Sandy, is are you okay with the change to the agenda on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Could I get a second? Second. Right. Moved and second. And all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. So new business, uh, the update of the special meeting, we are going to move that to our next regular meeting and uh, any correction should be emailed to the interim TA. Um, so we will go on to new business number two, town policies update and review process. Um, truthfully, I have been meaning to copy the policy book so that everybody could take some time, familiarize yourselves with it, um, and then we could start to discuss making sure that that's up to date, makes sense, everything is still pertinent to the town, all of that happy thing. So, um, 
if everybody is all right, unless anybody had actually looked into that and had anything that we should be discussing. Anybody? Sandy? Gene? No. Jeff? Michael? No. Okay, so I will get copies of those and um, I will let everybody know when that is done. Uh, number three, Mr. Garino, would you speak to the deferring of the bid opening, please? Mr. Chairman, when this went in the paper, there was discussion of meeting on the 14th. Um, so the bid went in uh, for the tractor sale uh, for the 14th, but the board won't be meeting until the 21st. And I'm just asking that the award of that bid or the acceptance or rejection of that bid be put off until the 21st. Any objection from the board? Sandy? No objection, so moved. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Seconded by Gene Carr. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So uh, next is the, oh, geez, I'm sorry. Mr. Emery, you are still there, aren't you? That's okay. I do look, not look at how efficient I was. Hey, um, I'm actually going to ask you to stay for both of these because I think that uh, you weighing in on the Wyndham County Sheriff would also be beneficial. So if I okay. jump past that, um, please remind me to come back to the declaration of the uh, state of emergency. So Not I, had a, I had a conversation with um, Mark Anderson, the sheriff, and just discussing the potential increase of sheriff's department hours. Um, we have to be realistic in, in my opinion that because of the stay home, stay safe, we are forcing people that might not be in the most happiest situation of their lives to be stuck inside with some people that are not making them happy. So now we, are, um, we have children that are home that could potentially be home with abusive parents. We have uh, relationships that could be resulting in domestics because of this increased quarantine time. Um, and that's obviously not the only thing, but that's kind of a big issue that it would be nice to have law enforcement a little bit closer uh, in those cases. But um, I did speak with Cindy today um, and she said that it's very likely as well as Mr. Anderson said that it was extremely likely that we would get a large reimbursement for these hours back from FEMA. Um, and Cindy did say that um, in the, for the current time, we could use the reserve funds, which currently has $50,282 and 10 cents in it. Um, so the money is there. It seems like it would be reimbursed. Mark's concern was that as this prolongs and more people start saying that they want police coverage, it will then be kind of a first come first serve, more of a um, as needed type basis. Chris? Question, yep. Chris? Yep. Uh, question. Just so that we're clear, um, this is a concern about domestic violence? Partially. I mean, increased domestic, domestic violence? It, potentially, yes. Yep. Um, that's one of the things that has come up. Um, certainly, we see it on the school side where it's a very large concern that um, students that would usually be able to escape the abuse of parents if they're in that situation um, no longer have that safety net of school so they're at home with it and DCF is not making a lot of house calls now um, unless it is I, I don't want to say intimate danger but um, I, I mean they're being a little bit choosier on what they're responding to um, that is my opinion from things that I have read. I, I don't know that that is 100% accurate and I don't know what it is that they will go and won't go for. So I just wanna be clear with that. Um, essentially, if we were to do this, we would have to amend the contract uh, and then the, we would be paying the same hourly rate that we pay now. So that this wouldn't be considered a call out. This wouldn't be considered um, really anything additional other than if we have 40 hours now and it costs us $70,000 and we wanted another 40 hours to bring it to 80 hours, it would be 140,000. Um, well, I, I certainly am sympathetic, but we do have a budget and uh, 
state police, state troopers come. So unless the, we're assured any extra increase in law enforcement expenses are going to be covered, uh, I'm not really in favor of it. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yep. I'm in discussion today with the Vermont uh, Department of Public Safety liaison to the towns on the FEMA reimbursement. Um, if this was worded in such a way that it was specifically due to the, the increase in hours was a result of the COVID-19 emergency declaration. And I think what um, Mr. Emery brought up earlier about a municipal declaration as well. Um, it could be put in for FEMA reimbursement of up to 75%. Um, and it appeared that that was a legitimate expense in the broad discussion that we had. Um, but it would, it would be something that would have to go uh, to FEMA on the forms. And the, the, the reimbursement, just so Mr. Dunkley is aware, um, if there were reimbursement, it's not, it's certainly, if it was approved, there's no guarantee that that's coming within a week or two weeks of the time you, you, you um, submit for the reimbursement. It can take a few to several months for the return, but if it's accepted, you'll get a check. If it's not accepted as an expense, you won't. Okay. Um, so I guess, Jeff, we, we've got your Sandy. I think, I think we should probably add them. This isn't something that we could foresee happening and you don't want anybody hurt if you can help it. Jean? I guess in my mind, my question is, how are these families going to be identified? Um, I guess kind of like, how are we going to know when they need help? And so how is that going to relate to what hours the sheriff is here? I don't know if I'm making that clear, but um, as opposed to responding when there's a definite need, even if, even if it's hours that they're not here, which I think goes back to what Jeff was saying with the state police. I, I guess I wonder what they feel it does if they're just patrolling the streets. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Michael? Do we have any facts from the sheriff or is he just looking for more money for his officers is what I'm thinking. If we have an upgrade in calls and stuff, then yes, we should look into this. But if nothing's changed, then why should we change? Um, this, and this could be a temporary situation also. We don't know. Right. Yes, yeah, so, so what would happen is it, we would have to amend that contract. Um, and then if nothing changed from the governor at the end of June, there would be language in there that the contract would automatically um, extend. It would not renew. It would extend um, for a period of time. Uh, keeping in mind that usually this is the time of year that we do hear from the sheriff about um, um, the, the contract and we have that discussion. It's usually, I believe, Sandy, the second meeting in April. I think that we usually discuss that. Um, so we will have to have that discussion still at some point, but um, I guess uh, unless there's any objection, I, I would like to have Mr. Emery weigh in on his thoughts on this. Yeah. Well, I'm, I can probably assure you uh, it's not because the sheriff is attempting to um, create more hours for his people because I'm not so sure that he has enough people to fig figure out, fig fill all the hours that are out there. Um, however, the concern is, is valid. Uh, there has been 
a number of different cases throughout uh, in a different towns that have dealt with the same problem and, and wrestling with the same thing. I don't think anyone can predict the time or, or the place or any of that. So uh, I know you're in a tough position about that. The only advantage you have, and it's not a hundred percent sure is that 75% of that cost could be uh, recoverable. Um, however, again, that's, uh, that's yet to be determined. And I think anytime uh, there's a government opportunity to recover money that there's always a question mark that comes with that in yeah. my book. So, um, so I guess I would, I certainly wouldn't uh, say it's a bad idea, but um, uh, it is a tough one that you have to wrestle with. Mr. Chairman? Yep. Is it my understanding, am I correct, that let's say the select board opted to increase the hours hypothetically to X number, let's say 60 instead of 40. It wouldn't be an automatic billing of 60. It would be a billing of additional hours utilized. So, so that, if they use that is my, yes, that is my understanding from uh, the conversation with the sheriff is that if we said, hey, it'd be great if you were here for another 20 hours a week, but they are spreading their resources around the county um, that if they were only here for 50 hours, we would be billed for the 50 as opposed to just a, a, a standard billing. Um, we were both in, during our conversation, the word fluidity was used a lot, making sure that there was uh, give and take, should we choose to go this way? Um, and Mark also said no hard feelings if we don't go this way. He was just putting it out there because we um, are in his contracted area and wanted to at least make that offer available to us um, so that it was made he wanted us to, to have this discussion in a time where he still could say, yes, I can give you additional man hours as opposed to two months from now, if everything is extended and we say, wow, things are getting bad, we could use some more coverage. Um, state police would be tied up at that point more significantly as well. Um, so the likelihood of him being able to say, sure, we'll give you an extra even 10 hours a week may uh, become troublesome. I, I did not get the feeling that this was in any way Mark trying to uh, twist our arm into this. He was very upfront that this is not a necessity, that there is no guarantee that we will get all of that money back. Um, and he understood much like Mr. Emery is saying that this is a tough decision uh, because it is different circumstances. This money wasn't planned on, but it is there. Um, so again, I, I don't think that this was a pressure tactic on, on his behalf. This was more of a concern from the things that we see. Um, I did get a uh, email today on the school side of it, just making people aware that, you know, there, there are children that are stuck in these homes. Gene, I understand what you're saying as far as the times. I don't think that there was a um, desire to put times on that. I think it was more of a roaming schedule and give us the hours and just a, a better police presence. Um, but again, that, that is entirely yeah. up to this board. Well, if we're going to increase hours, then we should get a discount on the alley rate. And again, if there's no quantifiable increase in calls at this point, um, I don't, I believe it's kind of a a little too early to uh, start making a decision like this. I mean, that, for example, today there were two state troopers running around the town. Anybody else? I guess that on this, we are either at a point where we could make a motion on this or we can uh, just say that we will wait to see what happens and move on to the next agenda item. I just want to move on. Hearing no motion. My... Yep, Hear, hearing no motion. Uh, Mr. Emery, uh, if you wanted to come back and
just touch on the uh, state of emergency one more time so that we can discuss that briefly here. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm back in and I, I'll just uh, reiterate what I said earlier is that uh, by the town declaring a, uh, a state of emergency, um, I think what it will allow is that if you do get into monies that are recoverable, you know, as, as you were talking with the sheriff's department, or there certainly could be other expenditures that uh, are going to come up where you have to hire uh, different people, or uh, let's say that you have to hire ambulances or becomes uh, fluid where people can't pay for funerals. Uh, so there's a ton of things that could happen. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is uh, so that we cover our pay base uh, for that. Operationally, I don't see it uh, changing anything that we are presently doing. Um, in my office, where uh, every day, um, I didn't sign on for that, by the way. But every day, I'm uh, I'm in the in the, my computer at home uh, doing stuff with this. Um, and so, needless to say, there are uh, other opportunities or things that could rear. Head. And that's all. And I don't know, again, I'm going to tell you that I don't know what we have to do. Uh, I know other towns have declared emergencies. Uh, and that's kind of where the whole thing is. It's only kind of, you know, being ahead of the curve if you know, something happens or uh, it, it would give, it would give me the opportunity to spend I think in our LEMP, that's the local emergency plan, uh, it authorizes me to be able to spend $500 without select board approval. Um, so, but that's not the reason I, I'm after, after that. I, uh, I'm not at all concerned about that, I'm more concerned about being able to recover if we do and do mitigation if there's any mitigation that's out there. Um, I'm going to go around the select board here and get thoughts from them. But um, in the meantime, could we please add Martin to the guest list? I just saw that he has joined us. Yeah, I have him written down as the chairman. Okay, perfect. So, um, Sandy, on the state of emergency, your thoughts? I would defer to David. I think it's a good idea not to close the door after the, the uh, horse gets out of the barn. So by the, we need to do it. He will know. He he will know when we should do it. I think. Okay. Um, I would defer to him, but I, I think it's something we definitely need to look into. And um, should we go that direction? Would we have to reconvene as a board to make that decision, or how would that work? We would. If if it's an emergency thing, you can call an emergency meeting like very fast. And I think that would be what you'd do. Okay, Jeff. Oh yeah, I totally agree with David. I mean, it, at this point, it's not necessarily an emergency in town, but um, certainly if there's some potential uh, in the future, yeah, we should do it, definitely. Gene? I agree, so, so David wasn't asking for it right now. No. Is that right, David? That's correct. I was okay. looking to see if you wanted me to. Uh, however, uh, there's no doubt my recommendation is going to be that we take the advantage and, and do that. But right. I think I need to do a little bit uh, more homework to see how we do that in the process. Oh, okay. Okay, Michael. Well, I agree. Then. Oh. Yes. Okay, Michael. I trust his judgment. All right, so uh, Mr. Emery, if I may task you to get, uh, gather some more information about that and get that to me. And um, at that time and at your direction, we would call an emergency meeting and declare that if that is your wish. Mr. Chairman, could Mr. Emery also look to see if you, when you declared that, if you could make that an effective date uh, prior to the date of your meeting, perhaps to the date when the EOC first met um, down on Governor Hunt Road four, three, four weeks ago. That's when it really started to pick up. And if that was the case, you might 
expand your funding eligibility to a earlier date? Good I'm question, not sure Tom. Again, but it may be worth checking into. I will do that. Thank you. All right. And, and I, it's the recommendation from Mark. Uh, I don't think Mark's on the line anymore, but as the health officer, he was in agreement with it. Okay. Mr. Emery, as always, I appreciate you. Thank you for being here, and I look forward to hearing from you uh, over the next couple of days. All right, and you certainly will. Uh, thank you uh, to the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, we will talk again soon. Thanks. Thank you. Stay safe. All right, next up, uh, as you can all see, we are on Zoom, um, and it seems that we're going to be that way for a very long time. Um, I think that it is important for our town to continue to move to have these meetings and that would also uh, mean that our committees need to be meeting. So the solid waste who met at six o'clock today via Zoom, um, they're going to start having regular meetings. They're going to report back to us in May with their suggestion. And I would like to see that uh, planning commissions and all of that stuff just continue to move forward. Having said that, this Zoom account is set up on Mr. Garino's personal credit card. Um, and I would ask that we switch that over so that the town is actually paying for that subscription. Um, and that would give us the ability to add multiple um, hosts so that Bob Spencer could be a host. Um, I could be a host. Uh, Jeff or Martin, you guys could be, I mean, so that would open that up so that Tom does not need to be at all of these meetings to host the meeting. Um, Tom, what was the price on that, please? I think it's, um, if you hold on just a second, Mr. Chair, I think it's 1549 a month. That's for the up to 100 participants uh, at a meeting, unlimited time on your meetings. Um, you know, and so if you had a four hour meeting, that'd be okay. But I can would give it you the be, price um, in just a second. Would it be your thought that on the other side of all of this, that uh, that subscription, when we no longer need it, um, could that be billed to FEMA because we had to use it for this? It probably could be uh, be billed. There is a threshold that you're going to need to be able to meet to become FEMA eligible as well. Um, but it certainly would be, you wouldn't do this, but for the emergency, you wouldn't be meeting this way. Okay. Sandy? Definitely. Jeff? And thank oh, you sorry. Tom, for taking the start us on it. Yeah, I, I, and, you know, I told the chairman, just so everybody, for full disclosure, I don't know everyone in town and I'm sure everyone is a wonderful person. Um, but if someone got on to my Thanks, account, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be a little concerned if they weren't a wonderful person. Uh, Jeff, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, we, we had to enact uh, a way to have a meeting, I, I think, rather quickly. And I think if this is working out, and certainly Tom shouldn't have to pay, pay out of his own credit card. Uh, Jean? Um, definitely the town should have their own account and maybe it can go on the treasurer's credit card. Yeah. There is a card for that department. Okay, Michael? So I'm on Zoom's website. That is the pro plan is $14.99 per month per host. The business plan is $19.99 per month per host with a minimum of 10 hosts, which brings it to $199.90 a month. So I just wanna make sure that is all aware. Yeah, mine was, this was 1589 with tax. And that's just for one host. So right. I guess with that information, um, perhaps do we need to look and see if they're actually, you know what, I'm going to, uh, Martin, I see you sitting here. I'm gonna ask you to weigh in on this and your thoughts. I know that we had had a discussion uh, uh, briefly about this, but I'm just curious if Zoom is the answer for us or if you know of a different uh, platform that we should be looking at and if we're going to have to make a switch. You are muted, sir. Here you go. Uh, okay. I, I, I poked around a little bit. I saw quite a number of towns in Vermont were using Zoom. 
uh, uh, you know, so it, it seems to be a popular platform. There, there have been some issues with Zoom bombing and that kind of thing, but there are ways that the host can uh, prevent uh, uh, nonsense and screen sharing, that kind of thing. Um, I haven't looked around in detail at the, at the price plans uh, that are out there. Um, but, you know, if, if there's a way to get something with maybe, you know, two hosts or something like that, that, that would feel to me like it would work. Or, or we could just get started with one host and see how it goes. Okay. You have a number of administrators, um, you know, maybe not so many hosts, but a number of administrators. Uh, I looked at Google Hangout, same type of thing. Um, and then go to meeting had one as well, and they were more complicated to use, not more expensive, uh, about the same price, relatively speaking, within a couple of bucks, but um, a lot more cumbersome to get up and running, at least to me. Uh, other people may find it easier. Even the post office is looking into starting to use Zoom, I've heard rumors already. So, but that raises a different issue as far as i mean we're either at fifteen dollars to essentially stay the same so that there's only one host or we are at 190 dollars to have multiple hosts so that's <laughs> quite a price difference was that 190 dollars a month 199.90 a month because the minimum for that plan is yeah, 10. you don't need that big a plan no, it's you can get you're it. looking at the fourteen ninety nine per month per host. If we added another host, it would be thirty, well, roughly thirty two dollars a month after the taxes and everything. One, just a suggestion. I, the school is a school using Zoom for for remote teaching. I don't honestly know. Uh, um, I got something for my son uh, called Remind. I have no idea what it is. Um, the the software looks entirely different than Zoom, so okay. um, I, I'm not sure what they are using down here. Um, I know that my other son, his school is using Zoom, um, but I'm not sure if they have multiple hosts or what's going on with that. So I guess I don't have a good answer. Um, I, I'm curious if the board thinks that there should be some more research done on this um and then maybe I don't see a $199 a month plan yeah I, I mean that would be overkill in any case my suggestion would be just get the get the one host uh, license right now and, and and see how it goes you can always get a second one of those instead of instead of getting a 10 tripper you know so right, i got so, a question um so regarding the the free use of zoom what are the limitations? The, the uh, freebie is um, host up to a hundred participant, 40 minute limits on meetings. So the, the, you got to have a meeting in less than 40 minutes. Right. There's nothing uh, wrong with that. Unlimited number of meetings. <laughs> um, <that> would, <laughs> well said, sir. Um, limited one-to-one -one meetings, 40 minute limit on group meetings. Um, you have an unlimited number of meetings, but there's in there was something when I looked at it there was up to nine people, but this one is uh, they've upped it to a hundred participants. Because I mean, for the, the most part in town, committees are not more than nine people. I, uh, no, but, obviously, you want the public to have a potential right. involved, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they all go over forty minutes. Now, what, uh, go ahead, Michael. I'm sorry. You lose the security feature when you do the free one. I know yeah. the VLTC or whatever did a survey about all of them. Maybe we can get some feedback from how their survey went. Yeah, I filled that out also. So we should get a response on that when they're completed. Now, if this is on the town's credit card, then there's really no reason that um, you couldn't give out the uh, the host information for the chair of each of those committees and they could log on. So, so really we could just do one and you just share that information at that point. Correct. That's what we, 
I for my uh, the school board that I'm on in New Hampshire, we have it for that, and then for um, a couple other meetings, we just use Karina's account. Okay. So, um, I, Sandy, do we need a motion for this, or are we good to just switch over to using the town's card? Or? I'll make a motion that that um, we thank Tom for getting us used to using Zoom and that we have the town now take over the, the cost of the Zoom for the meeting. Second. Uh, moved by Sandy and seconded by Ms. Carr. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Tom, are you all set with uh, getting with Cindy on that tomorrow? Yeah, I'll or? get to her uh, Thursday. Thursday, sorry, yep. yep. All right. Um, during our, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, next on the agenda is going to be Coldbrook Liquor License Renewal. There is a copy if anybody has the packet that I dropped off today, um, that is in here. Um, I. I did speak with the Department of Liquor Control. Um, they do not have any reason to say that we should not renew this license. Um, uh, nothing that is concerning to them. So uh, any thoughts on this, Sandy? No thoughts. Jean? Nope, it's fine. Jeff? Oh, good. Michael? Here you go. I would take a motion. I move that we um, renew the, or sign the liquor, liquor license application for Colebrook store for 2020. Second. Moved and seconded by Mr. Dunkley um, to approve the liquor license renewal application that we will sign and send to the state of Vermont. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yay. All right. Um, so, Got it. all right. Um, and you did get the one nay, yes? One nay, yes. Okay. Um, so this will be at the town office to get signatures on, please. Um, I don't know if we could all accomplish that by the end of the week get that so that this could get mailed in is everybody all right with that I'm okay with that okay perfect sure so next on the agenda um sandy i'm gonna ask if you would get us to executive session please okay um mr chairman i move that we go into executive session to discuss an alice j brooks fund request second Moved and seconded by, I'm going to give it to Jeff. Oh, <laughs> just barely, by a nose. Um, and uh, I am uh, going to say that we are in executive session at 7.43. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say we are out of executive session at 7.49, Tom. All right. Uh, Sandy, I'm sorry, I didn't write it down. What time did we go in? You went in at 7.43. 7.43, okay. Um, so we went into executive session at 7.43, came out at 7.48. Sandy, where are we headed from here? Mr. Chairman, I move that we make, that we authorize the expenditure of up to $750 for the A.J. Brooks fund request. Second. Yeah. Moved and seconded. Gene Carr has the second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Michael and Jeff, have we lost you guys? Aye. aye. Okay. All right. So that is all set there. Um, I will notify Tim of that. Uh, now we are on to old business. Town Administrator Recruitment Discussion. Uh, Jeff, let's start with you. Oh. Um, I guess where are we at? Um, we we uh, received some example copies of job descriptions. Uh, 
Um, I don't know. I, I, the more that I looked over them, the more uh, unsure I was as far as the direction that we should go. You know, potentially it could be a, not a full time position. Um, there are some certain responsibilities um, that do not necessarily have to be included in a town administrator's job description. Uh, certain authority also. Um, but I, I guess, uh, well, I'd like to spend a little more time looking at the job descriptions, making my mind up. But, you know, as of right now, I guess I'd probably feel um, if we kind of went with the same kind of job description, the same responsibilities, perhaps without uh, human resource responsibilities as what what we've uh, had for the last few years. And there are two more descriptions that need to come up. We just have to get down into the basement and pick up two from the 80s that I have now found where they are. From the old Vernon town administrator position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Irene and Bunny. And that was Sandra brought that up. Um, to look at, but we had to find them where they were in the file. So we did find them. We're going to go down and get them. Good. Uh, Jean. Um, in terms of the um, kind of the HR responsibilities, I kind of liked that some of the others used a little bit different wording because I think maybe the um, evaluation process still needs, it needs to be done by somebody, you know, and um, and I think that could stay there, but some of them word it as um, assist or oversees personnel services to the town employees. Some are like um, review, but the administrator, administer is, I'd like that out. I think we wanted the discipline out, the dismissal. I don't see any of them. Well, they might have hiring responsibilities, but there isn't dismissal responsibilities. Um, so I feel like those changes could soften this a little bit. And I also feel from talking to the town employees that they're not opposed to a town administrator overseeing them. I think that there just has to be a better match and that hopefully going forward, the select boards will be sensitive to everybody's concerns and um, adjust accordingly. But I think we can soften that a little bit. Um, and take a little bit of the, I don't know, it's a harsh responsibility that's stated in the um, job description we have right now. Mm -hmm. I agree. And also, also under um, administer all town insurance policies and I don't feel that's appropriate. Um, I feel they're administered by the town treasurer because she has the relationship. She's the really the money person. Um, so I think if administer again, maybe got changed to review and certainly be aware of and work together with the treasurer, but the treasurer seems to be the one that has to do the reporting and she has um, the financial responsibility to take care of, you know, the insurance issues. So um, I don't think administer insurance policies is a good word there. And that's, that's on H. Yeah. And then the, um, the personnel, the HR part was on, on N. 
otherwise I feel like a lot of it was the same. One, the Grafton one definitely had, oh no, that's not the one. One of them had a whole paragraph about, I forgot it was Guilford, about the select board posting notices, preparing and distributing the agendas and materials. And although our town administrator did that before, it never really was in that job description anywhere. So that might be a good addition. And that was on Guilford's um, town administrator, A under administration. Michael. I agree a lot with what Jean said. I do need more time to look over it more, I think. Okay. <clears throat> Sandy? Yeah, I want to go over them some more, but I agree with, with Jean. She's got a good handle on it. Thank you. Um, and I agree with uh, both Jean and Jeff. Um, I do think that we need some more time, but um, as I said earlier uh, when we were discussing the Zoom, I think that it's extremely important that our town despite this pandemic continue to move forward. Um, when this is over, we will still have a town to operate and we will need all systems in place for that. Um, so a couple of things that, um, to reiterate what Gene said, I, I would say the insurance and, and really any of that financial oblig obligation, any of that kind of stuff should really remain in the treasurer's office. Um, right. There should be that overlap. There should be the knowledge of that department, um, but there should not be any uh, taking responsibility out of that. Um, as far as the human resources, I agree. Uh, you know, perhaps they're the ones that do the hiring. They do the background checks. They they oversee those things. As far as the discipline, I do not feel that that is um, in a town with an elected select board. I don't feel that that is a, another hired position's responsibility to um, do the disciplinary action. Instead, I think that that position would be more of a liaison for our town employees to the select board um, and vice versa. That would be, if there was things going on, that, that person would be bringing that to our knowledge and then we would convene and make decisions based upon that. But I do not think that it should be another hired person disciplining another hired person. Um, right. As far as full-time versus part-time or what we call this position, um, I'm not sure that we absolutely need a 40 hour a week town administrator. I think that there is potential that we could still function and do quite well and be successful if we did an administrative assistant. Um, and that would also give us more, I hesitate to use the word secretarial, but uh, certainly at our meetings, that would give us a, um, a note taker. That, that would give us all of that, the person that would be publishing those minutes um, accordingly uh, within the timelines that we have. Hey, so yeah, Chris, I, Chris yeah. I can jump in at that. Um, I don't. If we're going to have a town administrator with limited hours, I don't quite agree that it should be an administrative assistant. Right. I think it should be a town administrator yeah. with limited hours, but with administrative assistant uh, help. I mean, because there are a lot of routine things that a town administrator would be responsible for, printing stuff out and copying that um would in some way not best utilize the talent of uh, a real town administrator so coming back to you know if we have limited hours i think it should be somebody you know with a talent of grant money and actual admin yeah. town administrative experience not secretarial okay right Um, do you think that that person in that role, because previously we had the um, the secretary, Michelle was the secretary to the board. Um, 
do we need that additional position or should this be all within that same contract? This person is at the meetings and, and in my opinion, there's no reason that they couldn't take those notes for us, um, keep those minutes. And that would be a part of this position that they would be required to publish those minutes within, uh, what is it, five days? Um, right now it's 10, but. 10, okay. Um, well, yeah. For, oh, sorry, for, COVID. What are your thoughts on that, Jeff, as far as utilizing that position to eliminate that additional, because I think that was, was it three or $6,000 extra in the budget? That, yeah, no, I, I agree that there's, there's probably 40 hours of work, whether we want to have it one person do it or three quarters one person and a quarter somebody else. Um, but I mean, to me, there is a full time position here with the inclusion of uh, administrative assistant, quote, secretarial work, quote unquote. Okay. Um, anybody else have thoughts on that? So, well, I, I actually do. I, I think of the times when we've really been working on like ordinances per se, or some of these other issues where there's been a lot of research into the law. And I wonder how you have all that to work on with us and still be responsible for taking minutes. And I'm, I'm not sure. I because usually the town administrator has got a lot of information for us. You know, they're not just sitting there through the meeting. You know, as we get back into a mode where we're really cranking through some things, you know. Yep. Sandy, your thoughts? Well, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I can see good points on all of it. I, it would be nice if, you know, when we, when you did have a full-time administrative assistant and she had a secretary, um, we actually got copies or the board members got copies of all the committee report uh, minutes. So we knew what was going on with the rec department and the planning commission and, and because we had their minutes and that does take time, but then the board is really everybody knows what's going on um but also at that time we had for my yankee paying the bills <laughs> sure would be nice to have them again sure would <laughs> <laughs> um so i guess at this point what is the because we are into april now um july is coming quickly and I think that we need to move on this. Um, what is everybody's thoughts as far as utilizing VLCT or, or somebody of the like to help with this job search? Um, Jeff? I think, I think we definitely, uh, whether it's VLTC or a private headhunter uh, agency, I think whatever money we spend in, in uh, the job search is well, well worth it. Um, I, I think as chair, Chris, you, you, you need to tell the rest of us what kind of time frame you want us to get back to you um, as far as our thoughts and trying to finalize yep. a, a job description and what what we feel we need to look for. So, you know, in a way you, you tell us when you want us to to finalize our thoughts Sure. Yep. And I just, uh, I, I'm trying to organize myself and my thoughts as well. So that's why I just want to make sure that we're touching on everything as far as um, everybody's thoughts on the recruitment, kind of everybody's just overall thought of what this position looks like so that then we can look at what that description uh, should be and start to put some timelines in place. So um, it sounds like you feel that we should be using uh, some outsourced agency to assist in this job hunt. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Gene? But but like like I said, we we need to figure out exactly what we're looking for before um, yes. we, we, yep. we make that step of uh, contacting some some assistance. Fair, fair. 
So, I go ahead, Tom. You look like you got something to say. I, I think this is where we go back to perhaps we do a Zoom workshop. It won't be as fun as as a regular facilitation, but really go through what you want this person to do. Get it home down because there's some differences on on expectations just from listening to the five of you. There's a lot of common understanding and agreement, but there is some differing approaches to how you want to go after this. And I, I think that if you spent an hour doing that, you'd get it honed down a, a new and appropriate job description could be written up for your review. And then you could go out to, and I'm, I'm talking within a week or 10 days. I'm not saying that this has got to be dragged yep. out, but there is enough, at least from my listening, there's enough um, fuzziness, for lack of a better term, that needs to be clarified before you go out and hire somebody and figure out what you're recruiting for. Right. Um, so, and there may be less expensive ways in the league to do this. All right. So what does everybody, I'm looking at next uh, Wednesday the 15th. Does that evening work for everybody to have a discussion about this that would give us um, all the week to look over this information? Tom, I would ask that we get those other two job descriptions yep. this Thursday uh, yep. emailed out to the board. Um, and then that would no, give we'll everybody- No, email them. Perfect. So that would give everybody uh, six days from that point to finalize what their thoughts are on this. And we could meet next Wednesday at 630 if that works for, and, and we could say that we're going to keep that to an hour. Everybody has their thoughts. Um, and then we can discuss it and make changes at that point. Sandy? Sounds good. Jeff? Yeah, no, we'll, right. we'll do it. Gene? Good. Michael. Sounds good. All right. So, Tom, if you would so kindly warn that meeting um, for next Wednesday at 6.30. As a work session. Yes. Um, and then we will wait for the additional two job descriptions that are lingering in the town office. Yep. That will give everybody time to go over the ones that have already been provided, um, make changes. I truthfully don't care if somebody rewrites the entire thing on uh, uh, going a different direction, if that's the way that you see fit. Uh, I think that this is the time to do it. We've heard the employees' issues. We've heard the squawking around town from people. So, And then we all have our own feelings as well. So I think that we have enough information to be able to put something together that, that makes sense. Um, and we can reconvene next Wednesday about that. And I just lost my agenda. There was one more thing on there, wasn't there? Um, oh, review of preschool and after school staff. Um, we had said that we would readdress this at this meeting. Um, obviously, everything has been extended. Uh, it is still my feeling that that money is there. It is budgeted. It, it is what it is. Um, my suggestion is that we do the exact same thing that we did in our special meeting last week, where we extend this out and look at it again. Thoughts, starting with Michael. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Um, that's fine. I, I guess one suggestion I would make, um, I suppose probably to the rec board <clears throat> as, as they administer preschool is, you know, maybe some suggestion of, of an online um, preschool gathering. Um, probably there's some parents that would appreciate their preschool kids being distracted for an hour or two. So I, I would propose that if, if we're paying people, um, I mean, with, with high school, there's a lot of online learning that's still going on. So I would suggest that 
you know, in preschool, maybe try, you know, try some, some kind of online activities. I like it. That's a great idea. I will reach out to Seth after this meeting. Um, I like that a lot. I think that that would, as a parent of a younger child, he's not in preschool, but man, I would take a break. Somebody could entertain him for a couple of minutes. That'd be great. Um, so I will reach out to him for sure. Uh, Jean, your thoughts? Yep, let's revisit it. Do we want to say when? Uh, when did we decide that we would revisit the other ones? That was May 5th, I believe. Is that right, Sandy? Yes, May 5th. Yeah. Um, well, I, do we need to do it on May 5th? It, it, the governor's decided that school is not going back. So I think that this one, we could almost decide that we're just going to carry this out to the end of the contracted year. Um, and then we don't have to revisit this one. Is uh, Sandy? I, I, guess, I guess at that point, um, you know, as I think I mentioned the last time that we had talked about the after school program, um, those those expenses for after school are contingent upon uh, budgeted income. And, I do remember, yeah. And there's no after school income coming in. Um, so I, I really wouldn't be in favor of continuing to pay after school staff no. through the end of the school year. Because there's no income, there's no budget to offset their their expenses. Right. Well, I think you could say the same for the preschool because those kids are paying tuition, and the grants that they get that all carries that program. So they're yeah, yeah but their grant money there there is some money coming in to continue to cover. Well, them. hopefully. <laughs> there's, there's not an after school. I mean, that's totally funded by parents. There's no grants to run the after school program. No. All right. No, but the kids are, you know, there's a lot of tuition coming into the preschool program too. So well, yeah, yeah, I guess it depends on who you talk to is I don't think it's ever really covered the cost of the whole program. I mean, the tuition, no. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, my daughter went through preschool and frankly, it was financially, it was a great deal. <laughs> right. Well, I know they get a lot of grant money. Yeah. And, and again, the after school program, I mean, they have to be self-sufficient. So yep. I, I, again, I, I wouldn't support continuing to pay the after school staff for the whole year. I got no problem to May, but. So what if we were to continue this to May 5th, yeah. but we asked Mr. Dio to join us at our last meeting of the month and have him explain the, the budget that you're questioning, Jeff, and just how the finances of that after school work uh, so that we would have that information prior to the May 5th meeting so that we could have and make an educated decision. Are you okay with that? Yeah, but you know, you know if, if this, uh, this situation shelter in place goes on for all summer, do we pay uh, lifeguards at the pool? Do we pay I don't, they're not currently on our payroll. I think that's oh. a huge difference. Oh, but, but I, it, I, I see what you're money. saying, but, but those are people that are going into the summer knowing that they have nothing right now, whereas these other people had mm. their feet taken right out from under them. At, yeah, I, I don't dispute that, but I mean, there are a lot of other people that they've lost jobs through no fault of their own too. I mean, unfortunately, that's kind of, the, the 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 life that we're facing right but those people are taking unemployment and if these employees took unemployment it's just coming out of another line item in our budget anyway that's not coming from the state is my understanding so, so i guess my question again wrong. is as far as the after school staff these right. aren't full-time jobs i mean they, <laughs> so <laughs> i i don't uh, i don't preschool uh preschool program, those are full-time jobs. Right. They have benefits, and I wouldn't agree with, with taking away uh, pay for preschool, but again, no. after school program, I mean, these are part-time jobs. Well, and, yep. and two of the preschool teachers are part-time. I believe one of them's only 10 hours a week, so does that mean that they're I, excluded from this? Well, in that case, yeah, I would. If there's a bring it up. Wow. <laughs> Michael, you were trying to say something? 
if there's a time there's no kids enrolled in after school during a normal school year, are they not paid? Are they paid? Uh, I don't have that answer. I, I um, think, again, this is where we may want to have Mr. Dio join us yeah. um, to give us some answers at the next meeting, um, because these are all certainly valid questions and valid points. Um, I can tell you that um, in Brattleboro, they're interviewing for their summer help, but they also, it's with the understanding if they're able to do their programs you know, they're not guaranteed jobs. Right. So, you know, they're not employees and they know they may not be. <laughs> Sandy? I think we're gonna revisit it, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, I will um, speak with Seth this evening about the, um, preschool and I will also ask him about that meeting. Um, we get recommendations. I've lost my connection. No, oh, you're still here. Okay. My internet is unstable. It keeps going in and out. I missed that last comment of yours, Mr. Chairman. It froze. Uh, I, I don't honestly remember. I was making a note over here. So um, and I think he, you mentioned you're going to talk to Seth. About okay. yeah. So I'll, I'll reach out to Seth about uh, Mr. Dunkley's suggestion about the preschool staff reaching out to those kiddos and um, potentially just entertaining them for a little while. Um, and then we will invite Mr. Dio to our April 19th, 17th, 21st, uh, April 21st yeah. meeting. And uh, we will... I believe we're in agreement that we will continue to do what we are doing as far as the pay for those two departments until May 5th uh, with further discussion on the 21st. Does that sound right to everybody? Yeah, I've got that noted, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so that I believe is... Oh, wait a minute. There's two so I guess at that point, town administrators report. I'm looking at what there is here. Um, I don't, some of this we've already dis discussed. I think Mr. Emery went through the COVID issue very well. I'm working with him on those things um, as well. Tim and I are working well together on things as they came up. The tractor bid's been discussed. Trash and recycling was um, discussed at the last meeting um, where the committee will be um, looking at the contract for Triple T and making a recommendation back to the select board. Um, I don't know if my notes are buried on that, but they're also gonna look at bag prices and uh, things like stickers like Westminster does that the chairman brought up. Um, could I, could I jump in here, Tom? I'm yeah, sorry, sure. because we missed a agenda item. Um, we need a nomination for Sandra oh, oh, yeah. to the Solid Waste Committee. Could I please get that? That's Ms. Rule, right? Uh, it's Rulewich, isn't it? Rulewich. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I move need a, it. Whoop. Go I ahead. move that we um, appoint Sandra Rulowich to the Solid Waste Committee. Second. Seconded by Ms. Harris. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Perfect. Um, so, Tom, if you could also let her know that she is now nominated and that her motion or the motion to nominate her as chair to that committee this evening uh, will now. <laughs> okay. And you can continue with your, um, oh, and on that, yes, they, they did organize this evening. They are already, they uh, will start meeting, I believe, next Thursday, or uh, it's the 16th. Mm -hmm. um, and I have tasked them to get us their information and recommendations by our 
May, our second meeting in May, um, and that way we could sign that Triple T contract as long as everybody is in agreement, and that gives us a little bit of wiggle room uh, before July 1st that would give us an additional meeting to discuss and, and raise any questions that we might have. So, Tom, back to you as far as the uh, admin report. Um, yeah, that, I just wanted to note to you folks that uh, North Star subcontractor uh, contacted me, and I'm, again, this is more of a learning curve. You folks will probably already know this. They're going to start building on the property that they bought off of 142, where the substation was. They're going to have a garage type facility there. It's right by where the high tension where the, where the, the high tension wires come through. And they will first need to go to Act 250 relative to their and, uh, um, and to uh, agency and natural resources relative to the septic. Um, I was checking with the assessors on some things on that. It's just, just a heads up. You're going to see some work going on up there in the near future um, by the sub. Um, in case you, there's no building permit necessary because of the, you know, no, no zoning and things. And um, and then I, I've been in contact with the representative coffee on a number of issues over the past that have to do with COVID specifically. And uh, she's been more than fantastic about responding to, to my queries, especially the department of labor stuff um, that um, I'm interested in because we need to know how, if people are, we're paying people that are currently not essential and they're at home, we wanna see how we, how we may be able to get that recouped. And there may be a way to do that. And it, sir? That's all, Mr. Chairman. The rest of it we've discussed. All right, next and meeting will be on April, I'm sorry, next meeting will be next Wednesday at 6.30. Right. That will be a work session, uh, followed by our normal select board meeting on April 21st. Could I get a motion to adjourn? No moved. Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunkley. He won that one. Uh, all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Aye. Thanks. You too.